Good morning and welcome home Shiloh. Here are some important updates and events at Shiloh Church. VBS and Made for This registration closes this Tuesday. Don't miss your chance to sign your kids up. Join us after service on July 21st for our VBS decorating and training. We will decorate the church for our scuba theme and have a training for all volunteers. Childcare will be provided during the training and food will be available for lunch. Welcome home. God is good and all the time. Well, good morning. Welcome to everybody in person. If you're joining us online, we're excited to have you. And I do want to reiterate, you heard correctly, VBS and Made for This registration closes Tuesday. So parents, if you're sitting there, you can scan that QR on the door. It'll take you to our digital bulletin. It's in there. It's on our paper bulletin. But we're closing that on Tuesday because we need to make sure we have good numbers so that we can be adequately prepared to uh, serve the kids that come to us. So don't miss that. You've seen our disc golf is here. We're ready for our made for this camp for our older kids. So be sure you get those kids registered uh, that closes this Tuesday. Also, with our paper bulletin, I made some changes to it. And so if you're interested in, in having a, a paper copy of stuff, you can grab this. Now on the back is the kind of week view of things. So not just the big events at the church, but any little things that might be happening. If you're curious, uh, kind of our regular, maybe there's a Bible study or the prayer gathering. That's now all in the back of the bulletin. And then my last little additional announcement, you'll see there's some lovely photographs all out on the tables there. If you haven't noticed by now, for about a month, the canvases on the wall have had different pictures. So if you're thinking, oh, wow, I had no clue, stop by, check those out. We've replaced uh, all of those out there, and the old ones that we're not using in other spaces are on the table. They are first come, first serve. If you want those, maybe there's a fun picture of you and your friends you want to take. Grab those on your way out. Let's pray for today's service. Father, we're excited to be in your house today. We just pray that you would be with this place, be with these people. Lord, that your spirit would just move amongst us, that we would be open to hear Pastor Ken's message, to worship you, to praise you, and to lift your name on high. We pray for everything in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take a second to greet one another today. lips with shouts of joy. Job 8.21. I want the joy of the Lord to come down. I want the joy of the Lord to fall now. I want the joy of the Lord in my life. I want the joy of the Lord to lift me. I want the joy of the Lord to change me. I want the joy
call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Psalm 17, 6. Before I call, before I ever cry, you answer me from where the thunder hides. I can't outrun this heart I'm tethered to. With every step, I collide with you. Like a tidal wave, crashing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape. Tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce. You cannot fail, the only thing I've found. Through it all, you never let me down. You don't hold back, relentless in pursuit. At every turn, I come face to face with you. Like a tidal wave, crashing over me, rushing into me. Chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? Like a tidal wave. Rushing in to meet me here, your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape, tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce, your love is fierce, you never let go. do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13.
jobs might not be able to make my giants fall but good thing i'm not alone may be seated. Good to be with you in the Lord's house today. We've been looking at Paul's last will and testament, his letter to Timothy, his trusted associate, and the things that he thinks about passing on as he reaches that point in his life that he knows that his journey here on earth is almost done. How many of you recognize the name Ansel Adams? Does that sound familiar? Uh, Ansel Adams, by the 1930s, he was born in 1902, was a leader in the world of photography. And chances are, if you have seen some of those stunning black and white photographs of America's parks out in the West and landscapes and so forth, it was an Ansel Adams photograph. He did something like 40,000 photographs, published books. He was behind setting up the photographic department of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He had a huge influence for decades, lived into the 1980s on photography in America, on conservation, on promoting the national parks like Yosemite. And Ansel Adams did classes in Yosemite in the summertime, seminars for young photographers. And then he did longer classes outside San Francisco where he lived. And these would-be photographers would show up with hundreds if not thousands of dollars of equipment. Cameras and flashes and tripods. They would show up with all kinds of stuff. And the first thing Adams would tell them was, put that all away. And he would have them get a piece of cardboard and cut out the size of a photograph. And for the first several days, go around and look at the world through that. Because here's the thing, folks. If you don't frame your subject, then it really doesn't matter about speed and aperture and focus and lighting and so forth. If you don't get that camera pointed in the right direction to capture the subject, because in photography, the subject of the photograph is the main thing. Well, Paul talks to Timothy about keeping the main thing, the main thing when it comes to your Christian walk as well. So look with me at 2 Timothy 2 and stand as you are able for the reading of God's written word. 2 Timothy, first of all, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. You then, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through many witnesses, entrust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. So Paul gives Timothy and us advice on the main thing. He says, first of all, endure suffering as a soldier of Christ, a follower of Christ, one that is devoted to Christ. Do you ever go to do something and get distracted? You know, I, I'll be at home and I'll be working on something and I realize I need a book or I need a, a, a piece of uh, paper or whatever and I get up and I walk to the room where it is and I get there and I think, what in the world did I come here for? <laughs> so I go to the refrigerator and get a snack instead. And I can't understand why I never can lose weight. 
It's, it's so easy in life for something to throw us off course, to get distracted with things. And it's hard to focus on the main thing when there are distractions hitting you all the time. I have a little brother who's four years younger than me. He went on the mission trip this summer, great guy. And as a big brother, I learned pretty quickly that I could distract him. Like he would be trying to figure up some numbers and I'll just throw out a random number and it would mess him up. And even if I was batting and he was about to catch the ball, if I yelled, I got it, he would drop it. <laughs> Hardships sometimes distract us from our focus on Christ. Sometimes suffering and pain can distract us. Sometimes problems distract us. Sometimes things that you know, get in the way, if you will, of really being able to connect to God. And, and sometimes it's not a big thing that can distract us from focusing upon our ministry to Christ, our soldiering for Jesus. I remember one time going over to the Chicago lakefront, you know, which is the beach area there. It was a beautiful, gorgeous day and laying on, the, on all those little spread out chairs and the sun on my face and closing my eyes. And it just seemed like that, that breeze blowing by a great summer day and everything got dark. And I thought, oh man, a thunderstorm is coming. And I opened my eyes and there's this one little cloud between me and the sun. <laughs> the rest of the sky is blue as can be. And I thought, oh, man, that, that's the way distractions work sometimes, right? It doesn't have to be big, but something that gets between us and makes everything seem dark and impossible. So Paul says, take the approach that these different professions that we know about take. When you join the army, when you join the military, you have to focus upon being a good soldier. Your life depends upon keeping your focus. And he says those soldiers have to not get distracted by everyday things. They have to detach from the world. They have to focus upon the issue. If you're a pilot flying around and you expect the enemy, you do what they call rubbernecking. You're looking around all the time and you cannot get distracted by looking too long in one area. In the Revolutionary War, you had continentals who signed up to serve anywhere and you had militia who served only in their own state or nearby and washington always preferred the continentals because the militia were too close to home and they got distracted at times they were too focused upon home where the continentals were willing to be sent wherever needed paul says remember how soldiers work the role of us as Christians, as soldiers of Christ, is to obey and fight, not to get encumbered with things that would distract us. He said, think about athletes. Athletes have to prepare and focus upon their particular sport. I mean, we're about to kick off the Olympics really quick here. In the old Greek Olympics, the original ones, when an athlete was to perform in those when they were to compete, they had to pledge to Zeus that they would spend 10 months focused on their sport. You don't just walk onto the field to be an Olympic level athlete. You discipline yourself, you focus, you keep your eyes on the prize, you know the rules of your sport, you go by those rules. Paul says, think about that approach when it comes to following Jesus. And then he talks about the farmer. And you know, a farmer has a lot of work to do. But if he cleans his tools all year long, then he's not going to bring a crop in. If he plants the seed and weeds and takes care of anything that threatens it and yet does not harvest, then the crop will not come in. The farmer has to complete the entire task without getting distracted in order to bring in the produce, in order to feed his or her family, and others. Paul says, don't let these distractions keep you from focusing on what's really important, what's really vital for you and your future. Now let's pick up again 2 Timothy 2, 8 and following. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel for which I suffer hardship even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. 
Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. The main thing, folks, is Jesus Christ. That's what being a Christian is about. It's about following the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. It's about focusing upon serving him. It's about caring for him. It's about being devoted to him. It's about keeping our eyes upon Jesus and our focus upon serving him and letting the Spirit transform us into the image of him. You know, I just got back from trip to Europe, and when you go to Europe and you go to those big cathedrals, you see these ornate pulpits. And they're often on the side of the church, and there's stairway that go up to them so that the minister's up high, and they're often made out of stone with carvings or wood with carvings. And every once in a while, I take a picture of one, and I put it on Facebook and say, you know, I really need one of these at Shiloh. <laughs> I think I could preach a whole lot better <laughs> if I had some. I don't know where we'd put it, but it does look good, you know. But you know, the best thing I ever saw in a pulpit was in this little country church down in central Georgia when I was in graduate school down there. And I would go fill in these places, and they were out in the woods and usually hotter than blazes in the summertime. But as I walked up to this wooden pulpit, on the inside there was an inscription that comes from John chapter 12. And it said, Sir... We would see Jesus. Sir, we would see Jesus. No matter how many funny jokes I tell. Man, do I tell some funny jokes. <laughs> it doesn't matter unless you guys hear Jesus proclaimed. No matter how many really interesting, edge of the cliff, wonderful stories I tell you guys. That doesn't matter unless Jesus Christ is lifted up. No matter how entertaining a sermon may be, unless you have that focus upon Jesus Christ, it's not really preaching. Jesus is the main thing, and it's true of all Christianity. And Paul says he is faithful to us. We are called to be faithful to him. He is willing to say, these are mine, they belong to me, but we also have to be willing to say, this is my leader. This is my Lord. This is the one who rescued me. This is my Savior. This is who I follow. I belong to Jesus. And that is the main thing. So let's pick up again with verses 14 and following of 2 Timothy 2. Remind them of this and warn them before the Lord that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Avoid profane chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying resurrection has already occurred. They are upsetting the faith of some, but God's firm foundation stands. Bearing this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness. In a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for special use, some for ordinary. All who cleanse, them, cleanse themselves of the things I have mentioned will become special utensils dedicated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for every good work. Avoid senseless controversies and godless chatter. You know, some arguments are worth making. Some issues are worth standing up for and making sure that there is a truth that's delivered there. But then there are a whole lot of things that just aren't worth the fight. 
They aren't worth the disruption. They aren't worth the harm that they make to relationships. They're only about words or personalities or likes. You know, in 40 years of ministry, I've seen a whole lot of church arguments. And some of them were very important, and they were vital to salvation. But there were a whole lot of them were more about personalities, likes and dislikes, opinions, things that really didn't matter. And they're distractions. It's like the man that on his insurance report said, I ran into that telephone because I was trying to kill a fly in the car, and it was difficult. You know, is killing that fly really worth crashing into a telephone pole? You know, I saw a meme the other day that I did have to chuckle at. Or actually, no, it was a, it was a headline of the Babylon Bee, the, uh, the little satirical paper. And it says, scholars show the Apostle Paul spent five hours a day arguing on social media. <laughs> Paul says, don't get caught up in these things that don't mean anything, that distract you from the main thing. The focus person presents him or herself to God for approval. The focus person seeks God's truth. The focus person can keep his or her mouth shut if the issue isn't that important. The focused person can say, you know, this is what's important. This is where our focus needs to be. This is where our service needs to be. And Paul says there is no shame in service done well. And it's interesting, the word that's used there, the original idea was there's no shame when you keep your row straight. It, it was a farming term. You know, you don't want your rows going all over because it makes it hard to weed. It makes it hard to tell the difference between the little plants and things that might grow around. The, the one that keeps their row straight because they keep their eye focused on the right direction, on the end of the row, is the one that's doing well. And he ends up by saying, God knows his own. God expects his own to get to know him. And to be shaped by the truth. Jesus' ministry was full of conflict, but he did not engage on things that were not important. And when others tried to engage him on things that were trivial, he turned the discussion to the things of God that were important. Let's pick up one more time and finish off the chapter, verses 22 to 26 of 2 Timothy 2. Shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with stupid and senseless controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth and that they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Paul says, flee evil desires and pursue good. If Jesus is the main thing and following Jesus is going this way, then why would you pursue evil going the opposite way? Why would you take the way that leads you further and further away from him? How can you pursue lust and greed and things that disrupt and hatred and anger and all that and at the same time pursue God and serve him? My dad always liked to tell a story about an event in football from when he was younger. I don't even remember what the teams were, but the guy carrying the ball got hit, spun him around, confused him, and he started running towards his own team's goal instead of the other team's. All of a sudden, his teammates are trying to tackle him, and the other teammates or the other team's people are trying to block for him. Wrong way Kerrigan. Do you guys remember wrong way Kerrigan? I think it's happened a couple times since then. Paul's saying, that's what we do when we don't keep our focus upon Jesus. If we pursue the things of the world, if we pursue the, the sins of the world, we're running away from Jesus, not towards him. We're doing the exact opposite of what a loyal follower of Jesus does because Jesus says, follow me. When you flee evil, you're running towards God. When you flee the things that would destroy you, you're focused upon 
God and avoid the distractions and you can focus on Jesus. We're going to head out right after service today on a mission trip with our young people to Kenosha. We're going to ask you guys to bless them before we finish worship today. But one of the things that you deal with when you do mission trips now is cell phones. Everybody's got one, right? They deal with them at schools. They deal with them in colleges. They deal with them in lots of places. And here's the kicker, you know. These things are incredible instruments. They can take photographs. You can record all the great things you did on the mission trip. They can provide information. They're great for emergencies. You can get a hold of people when you need to. You can get directions and on and on. But they also can be a huge distraction. You can't get the full impact of the mission trip on you if you're constantly texting your buddies the whole time. If you're constantly scrolling through Facebook the whole time. If you're constantly distracted by something else. And so, you know, we talk about, we put them on do not disturb so that we can still use them for good things, but during the mission time, during the group time, during the times when we are connecting with one another with God, we need to focus on things that are present, not our cell phones. Well, folks, everything that applies to youth applies to adults, sometimes more so, right? We get distracted so easily in our world, and to avoid distractions is not an easy thing to do. But it's so vital to not lose our focus you know, the devil wants you to focus on anything other than Jesus. He's happy if you focus on something that's good and nice and kindly and that you get lots of praise for, as long as it's not the things of God. Or he's happy to focus on something that's destructive and self-centered and obnoxious. But the key thing is the devil does not want you to focus upon Jesus Christ. But it's so important, not only for our own journey, but for our influence on the world around us. To keep Christ front and center. To keep Christ in view. To seek to follow Christ. To discipline ourselves like a, like a, a soldier, like an athlete, like a farmer. To see the goal and stay focused upon that. To keep... I lost my frame. To keep our frame <laughs> centered upon Jesus Christ and to remind one another that he's the main thing. I mean, think about that. Paul's been working with Timothy for decades. They know one another. They care about one another. They've been through a lot together. And yet Paul says, don't forget, stay focused, keep your eyes upon that. And not only that, Timothy, but you start training people because the day is going to come when you're not able to be in charge. And you need to pass that on to others. Keep your mind focused upon Jesus. Keep the main thing the main thing because Jesus Christ, dead for us, resurrected to eternal life, coming back in glory and power. Jesus Christ, who loves your soul, who died for you, who has an incredible future plan for you. Jesus Christ, who can make your past your past and give you God's future, who can take away guilt and shame. Jesus Christ, that has the power to break us free from sin and addiction and the things that would hold us back. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Jesus is the main thing. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your incredible love and the way that you showed it to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, help us to never forget that. Help us to inspire one another in focusing upon what Christ has done for us, to remind one another. Remind us as we read your word, as we worship you, as we sing those songs of praise, as we come together and as we go out into the world. That as crazy and scary as our world is, Jesus Christ has overcome, and through him, we too have the power to overcome. Help us to keep Jesus the main thing, for we pray this in his name. Amen. This is our time of response, and 
we have several aspects of that. One is that we do want to remind you of the need that we have for support for our ministries, for our work here. We don't get any government funds. We're not selling anything that makes profit. We depend upon the dedication of our people. And very few things show how well-ordered and focused our life is as how we handle our finances, how we handle our giving, our money, that aspect. So for your own sake, as well as for the way you bless others through that, we want to remind you of the opportunity to give, whether it's electronically, like so many do, having your bank send a check, or whether it's dropping something in our box. We also want to spend a little bit of time praying, and I'm going to have a prayer, and then we're going to have an opportunity for you to have individual prayer with some of our Stephen ministry folks, with me, and then after we close that time, then we're going to invite you to pray for our mission team as we prepare to depart this morning. So will you pray with me at this time? To God, thank you for this chance to be in your house. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Thank you that you hear our prayers, that you love us, that you have already demonstrated that love by sending your son to die for us. Father, we need you. We need you in our individual lives and in our families. We need you when we go through grief and loss to be that comfort and hope. We need you when we struggle with medical issues to be that healing power. We need you when we deal with financial things to be the one that provides for us and that given us that promise that you'll never abandon us, that you'll always be there. We need you when we sin. We need you when we have brokenness in our families. We need you when we struggle with sins or addictions or mental or emotional issues. We need you at work in powerful ways. And we thank you that you are there and we lift up our brothers and sisters in their need as well. Father, help us to be the people you call us to be. A people that know who our Lord is and are like him reaching out and blessing others and ministering to those that are hurting in the name of Jesus, proclaiming that God loves them and that they have an opportunity to belong to him through Jesus, allowing your spirit to mold and make us into the image of Christ, teaching us to love one another, to be good stewards of all that you have given us and to focus upon you in love, in devotion, in worship. Dear God, we pray for our nation. Our nation is in such crisis. There are so many words flying around, so much hatred, so much division, so much violence, so much craziness. We pray that you would be at work raising Christ high and that we would be instruments of that. We pray that you would bring healing and reconciliation to our nation. We pray that you would be with our leaders and guide them to repent and come to you and our whole nation be able to follow in that, that you would be lifted high and that we would experience the kind of community that only you have the power to create. We pray for our servicemen and women, our first responders. We pray that you would be at work in our communities and our schools and our churches and our businesses and all different aspects. We pray for Israel and for the struggle that's going on there. And we pray for your people in the Middle East, Lord. We pray that you would be at work in our world knowing it's a scary, dangerous place, but knowing the one who holds our future in his hands and that he is able to keep all that we commit to him and to bring us through this to his eternal kingdom. We thank you for who you are, for how you bless us, for what a great God you are, and we give you all the praise and honor and glory. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, as our worship team leads us, if you'd like prayer, just give me an indication. We'll have some folks that are available to pray with you uh, for individual prayer. And let's all be in an attitude of lifting one another up and lifting our things up. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, verses 15 through 17. Great Anne Marine said at 103, 
Write scripture on your heart for when you need it. Cause anxiety hates Psalm 23. So just say it to yourself, do you believe it? And I'm feeling like I'm needing it right now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me by still waters till my fears are gone. shadow of death oh I know you are with me my father my friend your goodness and mercy will follow me all of my days I know by your still waters I'm safe Lord I believe you can set me this broken piece of me to peace and quiet. No, there's power in your word. So I'll say over and over to my soul's reminder. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want to please me by still waters till the God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you that even in the midst of the storm and the uncertainty and the craziness of this world, we can count on our rock, our anchor, our light, our power to get us through. In Jesus' name, amen. If we could have our mission team, our youth mission team come up here, adults and young people. We're going to ask for a blessing from folks, and then we're going to run out, jump into our vehicles, and take off. So don't be offended. We, we got an appointment to keep up in Kenosha. So we, we are going up to Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is just north of Chicago. We'll be a part of their Week of Hope. We'll go out in team with other mission uh, groups from around the country. We'll be doing ministry in various places. They said from nursing homes to children's places to, like, community food bank type things. Uh, we do not know what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing a variety of things. And these are the folks that will be a part of that. So we would love to have 
your support in prayer, your support in praying over our safety, praying that we make an impact, praying that we feel the impact of being willing to step forward and do that. And, and I think Dave, or Scott, Scott, Scott. Are you, you're praying for us, right? So on behalf of the congregation, Scott's going to lead us in prayer, but we would like for you guys to be praying for us until late Friday when we come back again, all right? Uh, please pray with me. Father, please watch over and protect these folks as they venture out this next week to do your work. Please put your loving arms around them and provide your strength and love as they face challenges and celebrate successes. We know they will honor you in all they do. We look forward to hearing their stories of witness and how they impacted those they touched through your grace. We pray this in your loving and beautiful name. Amen. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Romans 7, 24. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me wide. Jesus for the 
brought me from the darkness into glorious light. It's good to worship with you here today. Before I do our final benediction, I just want to uh, say, you know, we, we all saw probably or heard about the news yesterday, the attempted assassination of one of our presidential candidates. You know, this book from thousands of years ago tells us over and over that words have power. Words are important. Our political climate is filled with all kinds of hateful, destructive talk, extreme talk. It's the end of the world if you vote for this person or if you don't vote for that person. And unfortunately, we're seeing the results of some of that. This book also tells us that as Christians, we are called to be ministers of reconciliation. Now that, that means, first of all, helping people to connect to God. But it's also clear it means helping people connect to one another. And you and I as Christians, whatever your affiliation, whoever you vote for, don't vote for, need to take a godly approach to how we deal with these things and be an example for others of, hey folks, let's pull back. You know, we're Americans. Let's pull back. Let's think about relationships. Let's think about what we have in common. Let's think about how we as a nation come together to serve God and build a better nation for all. And I think no other time that I can remember in my whole life do we need to be light and salt in a nation that is torn apart and tearing itself apart in extremity. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this time in your house. As we go out into the world, Lord, may we go in the power, in the strength, in the focus, in the service of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who called a tax collector and a zealot to follow him. Jesus Christ, who reached out to all different groups and said, come get to know God and experience the transformation that you really need, the reconciliation you need. Help us to be ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of reconciliation. Help us to be your people that hold high Jesus Christ, that live on the power that he supplies, that experience his loving protection, that serve you and glorify you and point to him. Thank you, Lord the mission you give us. Help us to be about that in this world. We pray for our nation. We pray for our communities. We pray that you would be at work in powerful ways and we would be instruments of your grace. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.